Welcome to our unit chemistry and cooking at edux.co. Today we're going to discuss the Maillard reaction, which is going to link to measuring enthalpy changes and bond enthalpy. Starting off, we're going to look at how to cook a steak. We're going to focus on steak in this video. First, when we look at steak, we want to find out what happens inside the steak. Let's focus at that first. Now, steak can be cooked to a various uh, doneness and uh, we're going to look at three different doneness first of all medium rare which we need to cook for three and a half minutes or so each side um, and the internal temperature would be at 63 degrees celsius now with medium we're going to cook it longer five minutes and the internal temperature has to be higher and that is also the same thing for well done, even longer to cook on each side and the internal temperature is now 74 degrees Celsius. There are different cooking techniques. In fact, if you cook a steak regularly, what we got is the result similar to this. This is a steak I cooked and you actually can see that the pink color is only in the very middle. You have some gray area and then brown on the outside. So it's more a gradient of color. Um, this is cooked normally per instructions that we just seen three and a half minutes on, e on each side in just a frying pan. There is another method that is um, more scientific and actually more accurate. Because in the frying pan we have, the frying pan is at a much higher temperature um, than that we need because we need to make sure that the heat comes all the way through the steak at a certain time because we can't cook it too long otherwise it's too you know black on the outside reaching that temperature inside the 63 degrees for, for a medium rare um, it's quite tricky and it needs to be very exact and and there are techniques which actually will make it a lot easier one of them is sweet cooking which means that a steak will be cooked at a constant temperature for 63 degrees celsius for a one hour now it doesn't you know doesn't matter 10 minutes longer or, or shorter here the actual timing of it is not that crucial because we're keeping the temperature constant and exactly at the temperature that it has to be. The result is that we have this pink color all the way through and not only like this gradient, not only the little bit in the middle is, is this pink color. Um, so how do we achieve it? It's a, this is a, you know, a cheap method of setting it up. Um, you just have a pot, um, I have an electric cooker which, is, uh, which allows you to set a temperature which is quite nice. I also have a thermometer because the electric cooker is not that accurate so I still measure it with thermometer to make sure it's at exact 63 degrees Celsius. Um, and what we do, sous vide means actually vacuum packed, so we actually vacuum pack the meat and put it and boil it um, in the water. Um, and now that means that we're just focusing on the doneness of the inside of the steak. We have not addressed, you know, that nice uh, brown crust that we still need to achieve. So later on, we need to still fry it on a really hot pan, but only for 30 seconds, very short, to only get that nice uh, brown crust on the outside. And so we're basically splitting what happens normally at the same time inside being cooked, outside being cooked. We split it in two different processes with the sous vide cooking method.
In the first step of the mild reaction, we have the sugar, uh, so the glucose molecules, uh, reacting with the protein, the amino acids in the protein, uh, and forming this first intermediate. Here we have, here we have the reaction. Um, the glucose actually comes in different forms. And the one form that we're more used to is this ring form of the glucose, but it can also have an open structure that we see here. And in this open structure, it is the aldehyde that is the main, um, this is a functional group that is really taking part in the reaction. Uh, in the amino acids, we have the nitrogen that is taking part in the reaction. With this lone pair of the nitrogen, it attacks the carbon um, and then the, ca the carbon of the carbon double bond O. Uh, and that's the first step of a multi-step process. Now using heat, very important, um, we then produce in this multi-step process, the end substituent glycosyl amine um, with the carbon double bond N and water being produced. Very important to note that we need heat for this process. This is something we're going to discuss uh, more in detail later. So after the first step, the mild reaction continues various pathways now and, and that's producing a, a number of different aroma substances. Um, these flavors that come out of it are actually captured quite nicely in this flavor wheel. Now, this is not comprehensive, so um, there are many other molecules that could be produced that are responsible for different flavors. But here's an example we can see in this area that the, the beefy flavor um, is caused by this molecule. And you might have a smoky flavor as well. And depending on the temperatures that you've been using, you have various different aroma substances being produced. Um, just focusing on the temperature, actually temperature is really important for the mild reaction. So we have a certain window that the mild reaction is taking place. Now up to 140 degrees, that's really before the mild reaction, the uh, sugar molecules and the amino acids are not having enough energy yet to react. From 140 degrees Celsius to 180 degrees Celsius, this is really where the mild reaction is taking place. At the beginning of that, from 140 to 150 degrees, we have uh, aroma substance being produced now because the sugar molecules and the protein, the amino acids, are now having enough energy to have successful collisions and starting to react to produce these aroma substances. Heating it up a little bit from 150 to 160, we now have the reaction intensify and we have double the amount of aroma substance being produced. Going higher in temperature, 160 to 180 degrees Celsius, we have now even more aroma substance being produced and you have the flavor enhancement is now at its peak. However, going beyond 180 degrees will, will mean that the, the mild reaction is not happening anymore. That's after mild reaction. Instead, we have now acrid molecules being produced, which are actually uh, causing a bitter taste. We have the sugar and the, protein, the amino acids are breaking down. Uh, and, you know, we have the steak blackening. We have this um, burnt um, smell to it. That's a really important part. And this is something we're going to focus on next in our calculations. So in terms of uh, the Maillard reaction and measuring enthalpy changes, uh, the equation for that is the enthalpy of reaction equals to the mass of the meat times the heat capacity of the meat and times that by the change in temperature, so times delta T. So the mass of the meat is 316 gram. Uh, we also need the heat capacity that's specific to the cut that we've used, in this case 2.6. And then looking at the temperature, we uh, started at room temperature, so 25 degrees Celsius. Um, and then we are assuming that we've reached the right temperature for the medium rare, which is 63 degrees Celsius. So we now put it all in the equation. Uh, so that's delta H, the enthalpy equals to the 360 uh, gram uh, of mass uh, times the heat capacity 2.6 and times the change in uh, temperature. So that's 25 degrees, uh, well, 63 degrees minus 25 is 38 degrees. Um, now calculating out, we'll get 31,220 joules which makes um, 
31 kilojoules. So this was the internal enthalpy that we just calculated. Now we want to talk about uh, externally what the enthalpy should be, um, like for the milliard reaction. Uh, so we use the same uh, mass, we use the same heat capacity, but now we're looking at a hundred and sixty degrees Celsius uh, where the Maya reaction is taking place. Um, and so that's the temperature we're looking for. So stop here and try to do the calculation. Okay, so um, hopefully you've calculated that the enthalpy equals to uh, again, the 360 gram times the 2.6 heat capacity. And uh, the temperature change is from 160 minus 25, so 135 uh, degrees Celsius. So we times that by 135 degrees Celsius. Um, that comes to a 110,916. Uh, that's joules. And so in kilojoules, we have 111 kilojoules. So internally we have, um, we need 31 kilojoules. Obviously externally we need much more because we now need to heat it up to 160 degrees. So that's 111 kilojoules. So now we're calculating enthalpy a little bit different and looking at bond enthalpy, at the average bond enthalpy. So here the equation is the, uh, the change in enthalpy equals to the sum of the bond, the average bond enthalpy, enthalpy from the broken bonds, um, and that is minus the total sum of the average bond enthalpy from all the bonds formed. Okay, so now we need to look at which bonds are broken, which bonds are formed. Let's look at bonds broken first. The nitrogen here, we see that there's no hydrogen, so we need to break those bonds, those hydrogens and the amino acid. Um, so looking at a bonds broken, that means two uh, times the NH bonds uh, are broken. So um, looking at the um, data booklet, we know that that is 391 kilojoules per mole. The other thing is broken is we can see that in the in the product we have a C double one N and in the reactant we have a C double one O so that needs to be broken as well the C double one O bond so that's 804 kilojoules per mole now let's look at the bonds formed um, we kind of looked at it as already so we know that um, that C double one N is now in the product so we need uh, that enthalpy uh, which is 600, 615 kilojoules per mole now, the other product that is produced is water. And so that means that in the water, we have two bonds that are being formed, the OH bond, and that is a 465 kilojoules per mole for each of um, those OH bonds. So at this point, I want you to do the calculation on your own, total the bonds broken, the total is bonds formed, and then plug it in the equation. So hopefully you were able to calculate that the change in enthalpy, uh, the sum of all the um, average bond enthalpies of the broken bonds, which is 1586, minus the bonds formed, 1541, which comes out to be a 45 kilojoules per mole. And this is, we can see that that's the energy that's needed in this reaction to happen. Um, understanding that this is only the first step of the mild reaction, the overall mild reaction is actually exothermic.